Welcome back to the Black Health Lit Podcast. This is a space where we can be black, proud, and healthy. Today's episode is focused on functional medicine. On this episode, we delve into the transformative power of functional medicine in mental health care. Dr. Smith's holistic approach to healing, combining psychiatry, nutrition, and aromatherapy will be enlightening. We'll also talk about how DIY principles can empower individuals to take charge of their mental well-being and navigating the challenges and triumphs of her journey as a trailblazing practitioner. As a reminder, the Black Health Lit podcast is for educational and informational purposes only and does not constitute providing medical advice. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share this episode. Also, while you're here, check out the episode description and show notes to learn more about this topic and shop the Black Proud Healthy merch. All right, welcome back to the Black Health Lit podcast. Today, I am talking with Dr. Tiffany M. Smith. Before we get into the topic, can you introduce yourself to my audience? Yes, I am Dr. Tiffany M. Smith. I am an integrative and functional psychiatric nurse practitioner and owner of Aroma Functional Nutrition Psychiatry. All right. That was a mouthful. So (laughs) let's kick it off by getting into what led you to become an integrative and functional psychiatric nurse practitioner. All right. I'm glad you asked (laughs) because uh, it's an interesting journey. So um, I'm a nurse practitioner. So I started out my career as a nurse and got advanced training as a psychiatric nurse practitioner. Um, And a psychiatric nurse practitioner is synonymous with the MD version of a psychiatrist. Okay. So I assess and I uh, diagnose and I treat mental illness, mental conditions. Um, And I was doing that traditionally, but I got to a crossroads where I was having uh, some challenges with my husband. And he is a combat veteran. And over time, he just started to have more pain and ache. And so it got to the point where he was basically bed bound and we're leaning into the healthcare system, um, but it wasn't giving us options that increased our quality of life. Okay. So no. he might get muscle relaxers, for example, but then he might sleep for three days because they knocked yeah. him out. So he's pain free, but he's not living his life. Right. And then there's invasive options like in steroid injections and things like that, or other procedures and surgeries and he's like no I don't want none of it yeah. because I'm not living my life and with depression not with with chronic pain you also have emotional challenges such as depression and anxiety you know he has PTSD exacerbations and sleep disturbances that yeah. comes with that because he's not living the life that he wants to so yeah. he said forget about it I don't want none of it so we're both like what are we supposed to do? Because yeah. this is the healthcare system we were both trained in because he's a healthcare professional as well. So um, it took a while. We had to be open. We had to be looking for things. And then we came across aromatherapy, um, which is the use of essential oils to bring about therapeutic benefits. Mm-hmm. And no one could really give me parameters and guidelines and how to use essential oils. They're just like, put this on, put that on, you know, but it's like, but how much, too much? What are the contraindications? And no one could answer. So I went to school and I got a degree in aromatherapy. Okay. (laughs) I started making blends catered to his challenges and he started to get better. He, I could put a blend on and massage it on him. And in five minutes, he's out the bed. And it's wow. like, what you doing up here? You know, <laughs> <laughs> moving what? around. Yeah. So now he's back engaged. Now we're back, back going to the grocery store, going to the kids' events where all of these things were not an option before mm-hmm. because he was in so much pain. Mm-hmm. So then the next question was, okay, how are we going to not ever go back there again? Right. So we start looking at nutrition and lifestyle and I got further education and functional nutrition and well, functional medicine. Okay. Um, and what that is, is really understanding the body at the functional level um, and treating the root cause of things, not just putting a bandaid on the symptom. Right. 
Right. And that's what he was getting was just putting a bandaid on the symptom. Um, and then the integrative part kind of comes with that. And that's all about um, integrating yoga, you know, stretching, walks, um, yeah. hikes, all of these things that make us kind of feel more connected with ourself and the universe. Yeah. And so I cr- used, um, I put together the name of the company based on the things we use, which is aromatherapy for aroma, functional nutrition, and psychiatry. Okay. One to be kind of like, what is that all about? And what it's all about is creating a program that works for you based on you and helping you get to where you need to be. And where that was the formula for us, you're going to have your formula that works for you to help you reach your highest and best self. Okay. That is, (laughs) that's phenomenal. I love to hear stories of how people heal themselves and then what people did to learn about those healing modalities before jumping in and just slapping on some olive oil (laughs) or (laughs) lavender oil and you haven't done the research. So, um, you mentioned your you how you helped your husband to heal. Mm-hmm. Would you say, in addition to the aromatherapy, in addition to you know being a nurse practitioner and, and learning the things that you learned and when you went back to school, how would you say lifestyle impacts our mental health in general? Yeah, so I've created the model that mental health is everything, but everything is mental health. It sure is. Everything. And so I would like to put spotlights on different things. So let's talk about the big things. Um, yeah. Our diet, you know, you know, I used to hear like trash in, trash out, you know, things like that. And there's truth yeah. to that. You know, our bodies need certain nutrients to function properly. And sometimes when we get the symptoms of depression and anxiety and insomnia, That's not the end, you know, you go in and they say, well, you have major depression or you have generalized anxiety disorder or panic disorder. It doesn't stop there. The question next for functional medicine is why? Yeah. And sometimes it is because your body's not getting what it needs to make what it needs to make to get you be okay. So we function in functional medicine. We look at those precursors to the serotonin, the precursors making the melatonin and where in that chain is there a a disconnect a disrupt uh something is too much too little or not working at all to help you be better and that's how sometimes you won't need the medications um you can have other options that'll help you be better now yeah that's just one thing with nutrition but kind of overall but we can give our bodies what we need through how we live. When yeah. we're sleeping, we're allowing our, our food to digest. We're, let, we're allowing our body to restore. And so when we don't sleep, yeah, we're holding on to those toxins. We're holding on to a lot of things that are not occurring that will help us feel better. When yeah. we exercise, it helps our brain function, our physical body and its lubrication and being. And so yeah. when you're not moving, it affects your mental health, Um, and then the diet and nutrition, giving your body what it needs. So those are those big categories that we know of, but we often don't lean into, but even smaller things. So when you're in a room and you look in that room, does that room make you feel loved? Does it make you feel happy, supported? Does it make you feel joy? Do you have flashbacks of good things? Yeah. And so if you just surround yourself with more of that in everything that you do, I mean, how do you feel in your clothes? Does that outfit feel tight and then it makes you feel fat, you know, are you like, I am looking so good today, you know, (laughs) when you put your clothes on. So looking at all of those sorts of things uh, in your life, you know, those things, little things can kind of knit, kind of knit at you, you know, and so let's put more to good things in that place because there's so many negative things we need to beef up the good and we do right so that's where everything is mental health and mental health is everything when we just start to look at that the other big thing is relationships and work you know those are two big areas as well that causes us a lot of strain in our mental health um and it could be as simple as um 
like one of my clients came to me and she was just totally broken. She just felt like she could not be repaired. Mm -hmm. And in talking to her, it was about her feeling misaligned with Mm -hmm. where she should be in her life at that time. And then not understanding the challenges she was having in her relationship. And she did not need, she didn't need serotonin, you know, for that. You know, she, what she needed was more, I had to work with her in more of a therapeutic place, giving her okay. more counseling and therapy to help her see and, and how she was looking at things and what her goals were and, you know, kind of shifting and yeah. then she was okay. No yeah. serotonin needed, you know, no triazodone or Xanax was needed because we got to that root cause. And, yeah. and then even if there was a dysfunction in the body by first, in her case, starting with how she was looking at life, her mindset, mm-hmm. we were also healing the body, you know, by decreasing yeah. the stress and making sure she's getting the rest and other major components yeah where she could self-regulate and be okay and then she just went right back into the world and did and is doing fine got a promotion and everything awesome I love to hear that and I think you bring up an excellent point that sometimes you know people we medication we don't need medications we need some lifestyle um, changes and we'll get to when to know the difference later on in this discussion, but I wanted to go back to your comment about our environments and our Mm -hmm. clothes. And when you walk into a space, especially in your home, does it cause strife? Does your anxiety shoot up? Does your heart rate go up? Are you feeling stressed or do you feel complacent or do you feel happy? And just really doing a, a, an inventory of how our environments and our relationships and work and and everything impacts us. And I'm a huge proponent of having a space, a dedicated space in our home. So I have a, I have what I call a serenity room in my home and there's Mm -hmm. in there, but plants, books, and a yoga mat and a, a chair and like some really positive things on the wall. And so uh, everyone may not be able to create a whole room for that, but even if it's just a corner with a chair and a book or a corner and a chair with a journal, having that space set aside Mm -hmm. just to make you feel good goes a really, really long way. And then relationships that's a whole that's a whole (laughs) episode in itself right there so I won't touch on it (laughs) Um, but going back to my my first comment on sometimes we don't need medication sometimes we do sometimes we know we're sick and sometimes we don't how can we as a people especially black people do a better job of listening to our bodies Mm. Well, you just touched on one of the answers with you having that space. We need to disconnect from the world and from life. I mean, never, ever has someone been so easily accessible to someone who could be across the world. You know, we have to disconnect. And and I'm going to take everything that you just said about your space and how you can need that space. That is the key. You have to shut the noise up. You have to disconnect and and reconnect with you. You have to stay plugged into you. Yeah. So that's why you hear more of the man cave or the lady layer, yeah. you know, and things like that, because that's in, in a nutshell, that's what they're saying. You yeah. need your space. Yeah. Um, you know, back in the day, um, I hate to say this, but my uncle would say, oh, he would make a joke about how men would say they'll go get a pack of cigarettes and never come back, (laughs) you know, because (laughs) (laughs) because it's a space thing, you know, you don't, you can't get away, you feel trapped and you have to, so to prevent that trappedness, you got to create that space to um, uh, get away. And even like with my son, I was talking to him this morning, how he's going to the dorms, he has two other roommates so Mm -hmm. where is this where are you going to get some space right so we're talking about okay go to the study room in the library you know find you a quiet place you know where because you're going to need it yeah so I think that's 
that's the biggest thing um, is getting that time with yourself, putting yourself first. And then the other thing is getting rid of those things that no longer serve you. Yes. So we're talking about the environment and we're talking about how you feel in the environment. So you got to ask yourself, is this bringing me up or is it bringing me down? Mm-hmm. Is it is it making me feel good or is it making me feel bad? And if it's anywhere in between, it's on probation. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in timeout. That's right. You got to it, is It's one or the other. Yeah. And if it is bad, what modifications are needed to make it serve you better? Yeah. Or is it an elimination? So we have to look at everything like that. When you go in your kitchen and you're like, I don't want to be in this kitchen. Why? You know, it's yeah. not functional. Let's make it functional. You know, yeah. you yeah. walk in the room and you walk in the front door and you don't feel like, oh, my haven why yeah and then you want to start making changes in the car mm-hmm. so yeah. take advantage of those little snippets of time when you can get away if you can't in a big way take 30 minutes or an hour for example right. you know right. that's one way to do it or just get up a little early a little later or what have you I agree. That's how you'll stay in line with yourself and, and keep yourself focused and, and going but getting out in nature it would be the third thing yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. I definitely think nature has so many healing, mm-hmm. or, you know, um, what's the word? Healing impacts, you know, mm-hmm. it really impacts our bodies, our minds, body, spirit to be in nature. And yes. I know um, for me, I can speak to personal experience, spending time in nature while I went through chemotherapy was certainly provide me peace mindset and and made me feel closer to God and just Mm -hmm. (laughs) made me feel more spiritually sound yes and and just going back to um the comment about you know listening to our bodies we have to know what is your what do you feel like on a daily basis and when are Mm -hmm. you feeling out of whack and sometimes that takes pausing to say because we go 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 yep go 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 that adrenaline is going we we pick we're picking up the kids we're we're taking care of spouses we're taking care of parents we're taking care we're running businesses interviewing running you know all these different things but sometimes when we pause that gives us the opportunity to listen to our bodies and our bodies will speak to us and say yo Mm -hmm. uh, i'm tired i'm hurting i'm sick um so i i think pausing is a great way to set us up to be able to listen to our bodies. Another question I have for you is how can we know when it's time to schedule an appointment with our doctor versus whipping out, you know, the herbs and aromatherapy? So, um, I think that the, the short answer is the level of disruption or dysfunction that it causes in your life. I like to liken it to, let's say you get a cut on your finger Um, It's a little bleeding, you know, it's broke the skin. So you're going to do your first aid on that little cut. You clean it, maybe put some triple antibiotic ointment on it, put a bandaid on it and you're addressing it. Right. But then the next day it's red, it's hot, it's painful. Pus is coming out of it. Um, Now is the time to say, oh, I might need antibiotics or something. I need to go see the doctor. Yeah. So you take that analogy to your mental health care. Uh, I'm really not feeling it today. I'm feeling kind of sad. I've been feeling like this maybe for a week. My, your first aid may be, I need to go get some sun, maybe take a walk in the park this week. You know, I'm going to drink some more water. I'm going to make it go beef up my fruits and veggies and, um, Spend some time with my girls and then, you know, see how I'm feeling after that. You know, you got to do your mental health first aid. Yeah. You do those things and maybe you're better. If you're better, you're feeling back on track. You keep going. Yeah. But if you're like, that did nothing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> I feel the same or I feel worse or it's progressing, you know, then you're going to say, I'm going to need another party 
to to help me evaluate what's going on. Yeah. And that's when you could go see your medical provider. I like to empower people to do the most they can for themselves, but then it's at that point where you got to say, okay, I've done everything, I'm not really getting what I need. And then, you know, you'll bring your provider in. Um yeah. With mental health, it depends because you can you can have extreme psychosis out of nowhere. You need to go see a medical provider. Absolutely. But if what do you see in the black culture, like in black culture regarding mental health, good and bad? Yeah. So I one of the things that um, I experience is if I say what I who I am and what I do, some people will push back from me. Oh, I don't need. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, oh, oh, uh, she's reading us, you know, yep. oh, she don't, she don't know, you know, and. Like, <laughs> yep, you know, I do it. When I, when I'm, <laughs> whenever I'm around someone, it's like, oh, what's your background? Oh, I took psychology in college. I'm like, you probably looking at us, judging us. <laughs> <laughs> so I do get that pushback. Um, and. I can say that as I reflect on different places that I've worked, um, that you see different populations of us there. Mm -hmm. So typically in just a practice where you take all insurances, it's a very low percentage where you'll see our culture there. Um, if I could guess 1%, you know, it's really low. And and there may probably is not a return visit. And I don't necessarily think that it is because of us, for those that come, I think it's because what you have is, is medication. Yeah. And and I don't think that in our hearts, we feel that medication is always the answer, yeah. but that's what our healthcare system provides. So I'm speaking when I was working traditionally and even now in my own practice, it's very minimal. But then when I was in more of a, substance use, substance abuse kind of in the urban area clinic it was a lot yeah. of the medicaid clients i was seeing more of us there but they were dealing with really challenging issues so it wasn't like I, i'm sad and i just want to get talk to somebody it was more deep issues and they were in the healthcare system yeah. utilizing resources but that's that in that in the different areas. But in general, what I'm finding is that we just need help in life navigation. Right. Like we're basics, just living. The basics. Yeah, we're living life. We get to a crossroads and it's just tough to kind of know how to maneuver around things because we have certain beliefs, certain traditions that are brought down that kind of get us mucked up in the head and don't know which way to go. And our spirit and our bodies is telling us one thing, but it goes against the way we were raised, what we were taught, you know, how we're supposed to do things. That brings that discomfort, that discord, which creates the anxiety and the depression. And so you don't need Zola for that. You need just a realignment and shift and perspective, you yeah. know, and what you're doing. Either you got to accept the fact that you want to be traditional in what, what you, you believe and what you've been taught or the courage to change and stand up and do something different or somewhere yeah. in between. Yeah. So just I that can... life navigation is the number one thing. I can agree with that. And that goes back to our literacy, our systemic things, racism, institutions. Yep. It, there are so many reasons for that, which is a whole nother conversation. A so, lot of generational trauma I still see. Oh yeah. Oh and, yeah. And and everything. And that's it's the things we don't see it. You know, somebody else has to point out how we're holding ourselves back in relation to what our great great grandparents went through it's in the genes and we don't yeah. even realize it mm -hmm. yep our genes our behaviors it's like when you make the same thing for dinner that your mama made mm -hmm. and you don't know why yeah <laughs> you know like if you go to my sister's house and you come to my house and you go to my mom's house we pretty much have the same ingredients. Like we all got a bunch of spices. We got a spice card. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. Who would who would ever guess? But it yep. it is what it is. So you ready to get into some rapid fire questions? All right, let's do it. All right. The first one is what does wellness mean to you? Okay. Freedom. Oh, yes. I like well, it. 
Wellness means freedom. That means that I'm not bound by anything. There are not pressures on me that I can, and I'm talking physically and mentally, you know, my body's not stiff in terms of physically. I'm not having aches and pains. Mm -hmm. Um, So I can freely move how I want to with no restrictions. I can physically do whatever I want to do mentally. I'm not stressed. I'm not worried. You know, I'm happy and I'm at peace. And that's what wellness means to me. I love it. Why is Black health literacy important? Wow. Black health literacy is so important. Um, One of the bigger arching things is the fact that one of the issues why um, we're having issues with healthcare is how in the heck do you access it? But, you know, it sounds simple, right? You, You just call a provider and go. Ain't that it? Not necessarily, you know, especially in our culture, because we have a history with the healthcare yeah. system. And yeah. so we're not just jumping into that. Yeah. We need some certainties that some things are safe or, or will be okay, will be heard. And there are no guarantees. So we try to do the best we we may Uh, So we may choose a black provider. We may try to find someone with some similar background or geographic background or do the best that we can, but there's no guarantee. You you know, I went to a black doctor when I was having like some asthma like symptoms and I'm like, Hey, I go to this area and I just get so short of breath. And he's trying to say, I have anxiety. I'm not have anxiety. You know, I'm Mm -hmm. telling you, um, you know, and just wouldn't hear me. So it's not always one factor equals good results. Yeah. Um, so um, access and choosing providers um, and yeah. then understanding financially, what does it cost yeah. to see a provider? And then three, how does that provider treat? Because in our healthcare system, it's tr- we're every, we're trained to treat the acute system you come in you have a problem we address the problem and we get you on your way Send you on your way yep exactly you come in you have a broken arm we fix the broken arm you go home and you heal yep. but in this day and age we're dealing with chronic conditions and we're dealing with um environmental toxins and toxicity um and things like that, that's more lifestyle based, but our healthcare system is primarily still on the acute side. So where do you go to get the answers? Like I said, sometimes depression and anxiety are symptoms, not just the end diagnosis. It's still telling us something else is going on, but our, but our acute healthcare system says, let me just help you not be sad right now. Let me help you not be anxious right now, but we never, but the system is not set up to help you understand the why yeah. you're there in the first place. So it's, you, you get caught up with all of these abbreviations and specializations and who does yeah. what, and nobody can guide you on who's the best person. You got to start somewhere, you know, yeah, you so sure it, do. It, is, it is so confusing. So with black health literacy, one, it's how we feel about the healthcare system. Yeah. Two, how do we approach the healthcare system? Yes. And, and then three, the results you get from it. Um, yeah. So I hadn't really thought about black health care literacy until I started speaking to you. Yeah. Um, and it reminded me of some things. Yeah. Um, and for me, the biggest thing was just the feeling uh, about approaching our health care system. But then Absolutely. once you're in it, how do you navigate it? Because you have co-pays, co-insurance, deductibles. All and, that. And then everything. finding... All yes. the terminology, all the acronyms, like yeah. you said, as a specialist, the list goes on and on yeah. how complex the healthcare system is. And and healthcare professionals even have a mm-hmm. different time navigating the healthcare system. It's just complex. I agree. I so agree how 100%. can people, yeah, how can people learn more about you, all mm-hmm. your, your businesses and find you? Speaking yeah. of finding well, how can people find you? All right. Um, So I am building my Instagram following. So follow me on Instagram. Um, It's at dr period Tiffany M. Smith. 
All of my handles are Dr. Tiffany M. Smith, but in Instagram, it has the period after the DR. Okay. Um, And then uh, I have some things that I want to give to you all. One is I want to give you access to a free uh, private podcast called the 21 Day Love Thyself Journey. Um, It all begins with us loving ourselves as far as having better mental health, better physical health, being well, um, and taking all the steps we need to live our best life. It starts with our love with ourselves. Then we can have the love for our kids and family and and it trickles down. So when you think about loving yourself, you might be like, I love myself. I don't know what she's talking about. But remember when you met that special someone yeah. And you dress up for them and <laughs> you do little things and get mm-hmm. by and yeah. do that for you, you know, do that yeah. with you. And then in our world, it, it's a lot that brings you down. Yeah. And so you yeah. gotta be strong within yourself, you know. You yeah. have to be strong. And that's what the love thyself journey is. So right. to get that, you have to text self-love as a compound word okay. to 702. Nine one nine four two four nine. All right. Then the other thing that I have is an app, and it's called Mental Wellness Unlocked. And that's where I have a lot of information there about your lifestyle, about living, and you know, everything is connected. So we'll put some spotlights on different areas in your life. Um, okay. you'll have updates on things that I'm a part of. Um, I'm always speaking presenting Mm -hmm. um offering things and doing things also oh i got one thing i'm also an author i have um this book called the parenting owner's manual that i have a chapter in called mommy's mental health so all of this you'll find on the app okay because i'll keep it updated but um in all of these areas, you'll learn more about my teachings and, you know, things you can use to help you in life with different challenges you have. Feel free to DM me, reach out, let me know what you're facing, because then I can help address it. Right. Um, I am at the point of emptying my last child, so there is lots of experience you can share <laughs> and talk about in that uh, aspect, and just being a Black female trying to navigate this world yeah so there's a lot to speak to so follow me on the social media get the app uh start the love thyself journey um also i even have a course to help you put in place the lifestyle factors you need to help you get better when you put the right lifestyle factors in place you can actually reverse diseases like for example diabetes yeah. These things can be reversed, these autoimmune conditions, when you're giving your body what it needs and removing those things that's mucking it up. Mm-hmm. So yeah. um, follow me. I'm here for you guys. I want you guys to be better. I want you to live the best life you can. And it doesn't mean yes, you got to be doped up on pills. Just give your body what it needs to do what it needs to do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. You are involved in so much. I will share all of that information in the episode description, as well as your handle so people can find you more easily. And I thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure. Good to talk to you again. You too.